شکرے خدا میں Yesterday, by the grace of Allah and by the mercy of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the karam of the shahadai Karbala and the shahadai Islam and the special blessings of the mashayikh ikram especially Sarkari Ghawse Azam radiyallahu an Sarkari Khaja Gharib al-Nawaz Sarkari Ala Hadrat Sarkari Hujit al-Islam Sarkari Mufti Adam Sarkari Sadr Sharia Mushid al-Kareem Sarkari Taj Sharia and all the mashayikh ikram I attempted to introduce the discussion on Karbala and in doing so I commenced by explaining the importance of loving the Sahaba Ikram and the Ahl Bayt Athar Ridwan Allah Ta'ala Ali Majma'in and today by Allah's grace and Allah's mercy I will attempt to go in the same direction and discuss further the maqam and the fazilat of the beloved companions of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the connection and the strong and powerful connection that every muslim needs to have with both the sahaba ikram and the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and as I mentioned last night that if one does not keep himself or herself attached to the Sahaba Ikram and the Ahl Bayt Ridwan Allah Ta'ala Al-Majma'een then that person will not be able to taste the love of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I ended while explaining yesterday the importance and the fazilat of keeping this nisbat and not slandering any one of the companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or saying a single word against any one of the Ahl Bayt of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to be very careful on the language that is used when addressing these beloved personalities I would like to continue from that discussion today and as the days go we will take the discussion into the actual battle of Karbala but before we discuss that battle I think it is of utmost importance for us to understand these important aspects about our connection to the Ahl Bayt and our connection to the companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and also to become aware of those who slander the companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the name of the Ahl Bayt and this is absolutely incorrect because I said that those who slander the companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are not those who truly love the Ahl Bayt those who love the Ahl Bayt will always be praising the companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I said to you that there needs to be a beautiful balance when we discuss the Sahaba Ikram and the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the manner of discussion is very important because they, one has to always make lihaz of adab one has to always pay special attention to respect and honor and, 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 and to understand and respect the integrity and the nobility of these great personalities and as I said yesterday let's say the Allah Hadrat Adimul Barakat Radilan set a beautiful balance between this and I gave you an example which I ended with closer to my discussion last night that where say the Allah Hadrat Adimul Barakat Radiallahu An said Mawla Gulbun Rahmat Zahra Sibtayn Uski Kaliya Phool Mawla Gulbun Rahmat Zahra Sibtayn Uski Kaliya Phool Siddiq, Umar, Osman, Haider, Har Ek, Uski Shah. Our Nabi is the red rose tree of mercy. Zahra and her sons, its buds and flowers. Siddiq and Umar, Osman and Haider is each its sacred branch. If we understood these words of Sayyidi Sarkari Ala Hadrat Adimul Barkat radiallahu ta'ala an, 
then indeed we have entered the garden of love. In tea, indeed we have entered the garden of salvation. Indeed we have entered the gardens of the love of the Ahl Bayt and the Sahaba of Sahaba Ikram of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. So I'm going to continue this discussion today and I will continue to discuss the Sahaba Ikram and the Ahl Bayt at Har Ridwanullah ta'ala ali majma'in. You must understand that all the Sahaba Ikram of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved the Ahl Bayt dearly. All of them love the noble family of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dearly because none more than them knew that the noble family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have been blessed with a unique excellence. More than the companions of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nobody knew that the noble family of beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been blessed to them with, his, with this unique excellence. They knew, the companions knew better than everybody else. Because with their own eyes, they saw the love that the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed to his Ahlul Bayt. And they saw the honor that the Ahlul Bayt showed to Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. That the family members of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they looked at the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they didn't look at him as a father or as a grandfather or as a family member. They looked at him as Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is very important for us to understand this, that when they looked at him, they looked at him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is one of the reasons for which Allah has blessed them with such excellence and such honor and such nobility. They are the greatest family in the universe. There is no greater family than the family of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the beginning of time right until the end of time. There is nobody from the beginning right until Qiyamah. There is nobody. There is no family that has been given greater honor than the family and the Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the greatest in Allah's creation. This is our Akidah. That Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the greatest in Allah's creation. And it is our Akidah that the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Imamul Anbiya. So every Nabi that came is a Nabi indeed. But Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Nabiul Anbiya, he's Imamul Anbiya. He's the Nabi of all the Nabis. And that is why Ala Hadrat Adimul Barkat, Imam Ahl Sunnat, Mujaddide Dino Millat, Parawan Aisham Risalat, Asha Imam Ahmad Raza Khan. Fazile Barilmi radiallahu an so beautifully says, he says, Sabse Aula wa'ala Hamara Nabi. Sabse Aula wa'ala. Hamara Nabi, Sabse Bala, Vawala, Hamara Nabi, Apne Mawla Ka Pyara, Hamara Nabi, Dono Alam Ka Dulha, Hamara Nabi, or Halk Se, Aulia, Aulia Se Rusul, Halk Se, Aulia, Aulia Se Rusul, or Rasulo Se Ala, Hamara Nabi, or Kya Khabar Kitne Tare, Kile, Chub Gaye, Kya Khabar Kitne Tare, Kile, Chub Gaye, پر نہ ڈوبے نہ ڈوبا ہمارا نبی آلہ حضرت عظیم البرکت امام اہل سنت رضی اللہ عنہ is explaining this in a very very beautiful manner he is explaining this in a very very beautiful manner that the beloved نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم is indeed امام الانبیاء there is no doubt that Rasul Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Imam al-Anbiya. He is the Imam of all the Prophets. And since the beloved Nabi is Imam al-Anbiya, and because he is the most beloved of Allah, and because he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most exalted and the grandest in the creation of Allah, indeed his family is the greatest family in Alam dunya Indeed, there is no family greater than the family and the noble Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do you think that the Sahaba Ikram did not know this? Ma'adallahi rabbil alameen. For those who slandered the Sahaba Ikram in the name of the Ahl Bayt, have they not understood that none knew this maqam and understood this maqam of the Ahl Bayt more than the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And today that we talk about the maqam and the fazilat of the Ahlul Bayt, 
These are based on the narrations that are narrated by the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The maqam of the hadith, yes, mentioned in the Quran, yes, mentioned in the hadith. But whatever has been mentioned about the maqam of the hadith in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come through the zuban of those beloved companions. Those who slander Sayyidatuna Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha and the other companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is through these very companions' lips and it is through their narrations that 1444 years down the line we are hearing and learning about the maqam and the fadilat of the Ahl Bayt. So how is it possible that somebody claims to love the Ahl Bayt but they are not loving those who have narrated the love of the Ahl Bayt to them? The Sahaba Ikram Ridwanullah Ta'ala al are those who have narrated those narrations about the Ahl Bayt. The Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not sing their own praises all the time. They did not speak about their own fazilat. Who mentioned this? Who narrated these narrations that are presented to us today about the maqam and the fazilat of the Ahl Bayt? Who mentioned the narrations about the maqam and the fazilat of Hadrat Sayyiduna Imam Hassan and Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu anhuma? These narrations were mentioned by the Sahaba of the beloved Sahaba of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So how can those who claim to love the Ahl Bayt reject those who have narrated those very narrations that are in the shaman? of the excellence of the Ahlul of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How is it possible? These companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were blessed with this unique maqam that we today read the narrations but they saw with their eyes the maqam of Hasnain Karimain radiallahu anhuma. They saw with their eyes the maqam and the fadilat of the noble house of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They knew well, the Sahaba Ikram knew well that honoring and loving the Ahl Bayt, Ridwanullah ta'ala Ali Majmain was in fact honoring those who are most beloved to the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they taught us the lesson that when you honor the Ahl Bayt, you are honoring the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The respect of the Ahl Bayt is the respect for the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And understand that this is another important aspect of piety which we can learn from the companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other words, they taught us that the love for the Ahl Bayt is indeed a sign of love for Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam fidaka abi wa ummi may our parents be sacrificed at his Mubarak feet. Now, I'll give you some examples for you to understand this better. For us to understand this better, how the Sahaba Ikram showed respect to the family, the direct family of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me give you some examples. Once people saw that Hadrat Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, do you know who Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu? Imam Hadrat Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu is that great and Mubarak personality who is known as Imamul Mufassirin. Hadrat Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, anhuma is that personality who is known as Imamul Mufassirin, the Imam and the expert of the commentary of the Holy Quran. Okay? Hadrat Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. So once the people saw that Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu who is known as Imamul Mufassirin, who is amongst the very great and the noble and the blessed companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you know what did they see? They saw that Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an was holding the stirrup of the horse of Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu an. Allahu Akbar. The Imam al Mufassirin is holding the stirrup of the horse of Hadrat Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala an. When they saw this condition that Hadrat Abdullah ibn, ibn Abbas radiallahu an, the Imam al-Mufassirin 
is holding the stirrup of the horse of Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu an. They said, you are older than Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu an, but you are holding the stirrup of his horse. You are older than him. You are senior and you are holding the stirrup of the horse of Imam Hussain radiallahu an. On hearing this, subhanallah, listen to this answer of Sahabi Rasul, Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an. On hearing this, he said, Hazrat Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu an is the son, in other words, the grandson. They referred to him as the son of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Hazrat Sayyiduna Imam Hussain, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas, when he was said, told this, and when he heard what they said about holding the stirrup of the horse, what did he say? He said, Hazrat Sayyiduna Imam Hussain is the son of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other words, he's the descendant, he's the grandson of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So is it not a blessing and honor for me to hold the stirrup of the reins of his horse? To hold the stirrup of the reins of his horse? Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu is saying that when they told him that you are elder, how are you holding the stirrup of his horse? And he said that he is the beloved grandson of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So is it not a blessing and an honor for me to hold the stirrup or the reins of his horse? Now think about it for a moment. Look at the love that this companion of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has for Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. Look at the love that he has for the beautiful member of the noble household of beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, it must be noted that anyone who claims to love the Ahl Bayt, and I'm saying this on numerous occasions, and I will continue saying this so that it is embedded in our hearts. It must be noted, after listening to this waqiyah as well, it must be noted that anyone who claims to love the Ahl Bayt at har and then slanders any Sahabi or belittles any Sahabi of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is false in his claim of loving the Ahl Bayt of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ridwanullahi ta'ala al-majma'in. If we truly love the Ahl Bayt, ridwanullahi ta'ala al-majma'in, then the love of the Ahl Bayt is in loving and respecting every companion, every noble Sahabi of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Abu Nu'ayn Ahmad bin Abdullah al-Asfahani radiallahu an say something very beautiful. Hadrat Sayyidina Imam Abu Nu'ayn Ahmad bin Abdullah al-Asfahani radiallahu an beautifully explains something about the signs of the love of the Ahl Bayt. He says that those who love the Ahl Bayt at Har radiallahu anhu are those with parched lips, dry lips. They are the ones who lower their foreheads in the court of Almighty Allah. And they are those who always remember that. They keep away from people who love the world and they abstain from the company of tyrants and the wealthy. These are the ones who have divorced themselves from the pleasures and the comforts of the world and from the passion and the desires of the world, even avoiding extravagance in their food and drink. They are those who are firm and steadfast in following the way of the Rasuls, the Siddiqeen. They are the ones who are firm, Hazrat Imam Abu Munayim says, one of the signs of those who love the Ahl Bayt is they are those who are firm and steadfast in the way of, the, of following the Rasul and the Siddiqeen and the Awliya. He says, even while living in the world, while they are attacked, even while living in the world, they divorce themselves from this world which will soon perish while they are attracted and devoted to the thoughts of the hereafter, which is the eternal life, until they finally reach the court of their most merciful, most compassionate, most gracious Creator Almighty Allah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. What beautiful words of Hadrat Sayyiduna Imam Abu Nu'aym radiallahu ta'ala when he's speaking about those who love the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. These are signs of the truly pious servants of Almighty Allah and those who truly love the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is from these pious and blessed servants that we have learned how to love the noble family of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why when it comes to the love of the family of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and honoring the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
Today in this zamana we go to the gate of Imam Ahmad Raza Khan Fazil Brelvi radiallahu an. We go to the doorstep of Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu ta'ala an. We go to the darbar of Sayyidina Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu ta'ala an. And we stand in that court holding the doorpost and we repeat the words which Allah Hadrat Imam Ahl Sunnah Asha Imam Ahmad Raza Khan radiallahu an said about the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what did he say? He said, Teri nasle paak me he bacha bacha noor ka. Teri nasle paak me he bacha bacha noor ka. Tu he aine noor tera sab gharana noor ka. Teri nasle paak me ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Teri nasle paak me he bacha bacha noor ka. Tu he aine noor tera sab gharana noor ka. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala Hadrat is saying, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Habib Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O you who is the greatest in Allah's creation, O you who is the Imamul Anbiya, O you to whom Jibreel Amin Ali Salatu Wasallam would come with respect and honor to them, to that beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidi Ala Hadrat, Imam Ahl Sunnat, Asha Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Fazl Barelvi Radiallahu Ta'ala An is opening his heart. And he's presenting the pearls of his aqidat in the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's presenting the gems of his love for the Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says that which I said we should all say as we hold the doorpost of the court of Sayyidi Ala Hadrat radiallahu an. And when we come into the sacred and the Mubarak court of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then we should repeat these words of Sayyidi Ala حضرت رضی اللہ عنہ کہ تیری نسل پاک میں یا رسول اللہ تیری نسل پاک میں ہے بچہ بچہ نور کا تو ہے عین نور تیرا سب گھرانہ نور کا یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فدا کے ابی و امی ایوری چائلڈ فرم یا نوبل دیسینڈنس is indeed a child of light Every child, Ya Rasulullah Sallam, from your noble descendants is indeed a child of light. You are indeed the source of light, while your entire household is light. You are indeed the source of this noor, while your entire household is noor. Look at how Sayyidi Ala Hadrat Adimul Barkat radiallahu an explained with Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Nabi is noor, no doubt the entire Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah Pak is noor. For those those who are arguing about whether the Nabi is Noor or not Noor, Allah Hadrat Adimul Barakati radiallahu anhu is saying, Leave alone our Nabi through the sadqa of his of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There are sab gharana Noor ka. His entire household, the entire noble family, the entire bed of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, all the descendants of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam are Noor. They are light. سبحان الله تلو دي باك الله ما شاء الله على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد صلاة محمد صلاة دائمة مقبولة تعد بها أنها قول عظيم. Now as far as those who have enmity with the companions of the beloved Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم and slander the companions of the beloved Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم. Let me tell you how honourable they are. Who those companions? Let me tell you how honourable those companions are and how exalted they are. Let me tell you how honorable they are. In other words, those companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let me tell you how honorable those companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are and how exalted they are. No matter how much anyone strives in his life, he will never be able to attain the station of sahabiyat. Always remember this. No matter how great a wali you may become, nobody will be able to attain the station of Sahabiyyat. This is unique to those fortunate ones who saw the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the eyes of Iman and left this world in the state of Iman. Those who Allah chose to be the chosen companions of the most chosen beloved Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now let me try to explain in this short amount of time the maqam of these blessed companions of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how connected the companions and the Ahl Bayt are and how balanced this love is. Okay? There is a companion and I'm sure you must have heard this before but I'm mentioning it so that you understand this discussion better. There is a companion of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by the name Hadrat Sayyiduna Usman bin Maz'un radiallahu anhu. 
What is his name? Hadrat Sayyiduna Uthman bin Maz'un radiallahu ta'ala an. Sayyiduna Uthman bin Maz'un radiallahu an is reported to be the first of the companions, okay, who were laid to rest in Jannatul Baqi Sharif, which is Jannatul Baqi, the most sacred Qabristan in the world. Okay, the cemetery of Madinatul Munawwara. The resting place of the companions of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina, which is in front of the Nazar of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Usman bin Maz'un radiallahu anhu is reported to be the first of the companions who were laid to rest in Jannatul Baqi Sharif. Now think about this, Jannatul Baqi and think about the first of the companions to be laid to rest there in Jannatul Baqi. It is reported that after he passed from this dunya, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kissed this sahabi Hadrat Usman bin, Uthman bin Mad'un radiallahu ta'ala on his forehead and said bury him in Baqi. Bury him in Baqi so that, and, and, and I'm giving you the, the gist of the narrations, that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kissed him on his forehead and said bury him in Baqi so that for us in this matter he may be the first of the elders to be, re- in other words, to be resting here. As well as, now understand, as well as being a support, Sahabi, it is reported that he is also the foster brother of the beloved Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In other narrations, it is reported that when Hadrat Sayyiduna Uthman bin Maz'un radiallahu anh, left this world, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wept so much. Allah's Nabi, Allah's beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wept so much. That the tears flowed down the Mubarak cheeks of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and fell onto the Mubarak face of Hazrat Usman bin Maz'un radiallahu ta'ala an. It is reported that when Hazrat Sayyidina Usman ibn Maz'un radiallahu anh passed from this dunya, then the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wept so much that the Mubarak tears flowed down the Mubarak cheeks of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and fell on the face of Hadrat Usman bin Maz'un radiallahu ta'ala an Allahu Akbar. Something has just come to my mind right now that who is weeping? He is weeping that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who day and night wept for his ummah who at night would weep in the love of his ummah in the court of Allah for our forgiveness that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who remembered us during every moment of his life. That Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's weeping concerning which ala hadrat adimul barakat imam ahl sunnat radiallahu anh says ki Allah kya jahannam ab bhi na sard hoga ro ro ke mustafa ne darya baha diye hai. That beloved of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is weeping on the passing of hadrat sayyiduna usman ibn maz'un radiallahu ta'ala anh. The beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is weeping? The beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to whose Mubarak feet the arsh embraces. But look at the good fortune of Hadrat Usman bin Maz'un radiallahu anhu the sahabi. That upon his face is following, is falling, are falling. Upon his face are falling those blessed pearls which are more valuable and more precious than the most beautiful pearl of Jannah. Those blessed and Mubarak tears, which are more valuable and more precious than the most beautiful pearl of Jannah. The sacred tears of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are falling upon his face. My heart tells me that when Hadrat Uthman bin Maz'un radiallahu anhu was placed in his Mubarak grave and the angels came to question him, they would have immediately sensed the glow from his face and thought, what will we ask him when his face is glowing through the sacred droplets of the Mubarak tears of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would have definitely sensed the glow from his face. Every sahabi that went into his kabar was glowing. But indeed, when Hadrat Usman bin Maz'un went in, because of the barakat of the tears of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that fell on his face, indeed, the angels would have thought, what will we ask him when his face is glowing through the sacred droplets of the Mubarak tears of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the condition, my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, of the sahaba kiram The companions, they are the blessed ones. Many of them who were laid to rest in their graves under the shade of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some by the Mubarak hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
एक्सप्लेनिंग दिस हजरत सूफी जमील कादरी रजी ब्यूटिफुली सेज इसे इस पूछते क्या हो फरिश्तो कब्र में पूछते क्या हो फरिश्तो कब्र में बंदाए हक हूं गदाए मुस्तफा पूछते क्या हो फरिश्तो कब्र में बंदाए हक हूं गदाए मुस्तफा इन माई ग्रेव ओ एंजल्स वॉट आर यू क्वेश्चनिंग मी ओवर इन माई ग्रेव ओ एंजल्स वॉट आर यू क्वेश्चनिंग मी ओवर आई एम द सर्वेंट ऑफ अल्लाह एंड स्लेव ऑफ मुस्तफा सल्लाम एंड ही सेज है उनके दफन पे कुर्बान जान आलम की है उनके दफन पे कुर्बान जान आलम की जो तेरे हाथ से है कब्र में सुलाए हुए सुबह अल्लाह जो तेरे हाथ से है कब्र में सुलाए हुए अपॉन दे बरियर द सोल ऑफ द यूनिवर्स इज सेक्रीफाइज हु आर लेट टू रेस्ट इन द ग्रेव बाई योर हैंड सो सीक्रेट या रसोल्लाम सो वी वे सही that hadrat said now when the hadrat said now usman ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu left this dunya the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said bari him in baqi now it must be understood that jannatul baqi initially had many and many trees and the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam had those trees removed and had the land cleared and thereafter had hadrat usman bin mas'ud radiyallahu anhu laid to rest there okay so the holy grave of hadrat sayyidina usman bin mas'ud radiyallahu anhu is situated in jannatul baqi towards the eastern side which used to be the house of hadrat sayyiduna aqil radiyallahu anhu in that area now while i am discussing hazrat usman bin mas'ud radiyallahu anhu let me tell you that the position of his blessed grave in jannatul baqi sharif was such that it was directly opposite and is directly opposite the sacred and mubarak home of nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam and when anyone stood at the grave of hazrat usman bin mas'ud radiyallahu an he would be able to look without any hindrance and obstruction at the sacred home of rasul pak sallallahu alaihi wasallam look at where nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam put subhanallah sallallahu alaihi wasallam nabi subhanallah nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered for him to be laid to rest in baqi sharif in such a position that even after leaving this world he would be in front of the blessed home of nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is this who are we talking about a sahabi of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and food for thought let me tell you that sheikh muhakkik sheikh abdul haq muhaddith delvi radiyallahu anhu writes in jazbul qulub that the time of writing this book when he wrote jazbul qulub he says that the grave of sayyidina usman bin mas'ud radiyallahu anhu still had a dome over it in other words in that zamana even the qabr of hazrat usman bin mas'ud radiyallahu anhu had a dome over it away from the discussion but something to understand sadly his mazar sharif and that of numerous companions and ahli bayt have been bulldozed by the evil saudi regime not regime but regime however the fact that there were domes over the mazars of the beloveds is evidence that it was the manner of the ahli madina to honor the graves of the beloveds and to construct domes over them and this destruction and desecration was started by the wahhabis who bulldozed the sacred sites let me tell you they destroyed the heritage these wahhabis they destroyed the heritage of the muslim ummah by bulldozing the mazars of these pious personalities and by bulldozing the places of historic relevance but have no shame in building cinemas and places of sin in the holy cities of islam this is why hosul waqt sayyidi sarkar e mufti azam radhiyallahu anhu said ke tere habib ka pyara chaman kiya barbaad ilahi nikle ye najdi bala madine se they have ruined the beautiful gardens of your beloved oh allah may this evil najdis be driven out of madina and it will happen when allah wills allah protect us from those who destroy the spiritual and islamic heritage sites of the muslims the west and the kufar protect all the heritage sites so that the future generations do not forget but these enemies in the guise of being muslims destroy the so sacred sites and why did they do this so that the next generation forgets yet they have no shame in doing all their khurafat but they need to understand that no matter what they do they will not be able to remove the love of the beloveds from the heart of the muslims for allah has embedded by his grace and his mercy the love of his nabi in the hearts of those who deserve that love and he has embraced him embedded in their hearts the love of the beloveds as well so when coming back to and going going further on this discussion and i'm trying to explain here the maqam of the ahli bayt and the connection and the and and and, and the fazilat of the ahli bayt and the sahaba the the, the sahaba of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so when hadrat let me tell you another thing when hadrat sayyidatuna ruqayya the beloved daughter of the beloved rasul passed sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed from this world the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded that she be laid to rest near sayyidina usman bin mas'ud radhiyallahu anhu who is she who is she she is the blessed daughter of nabi karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam and where did the beloved nabi karim sallam commanded that his blessed daughter should be laid to rest near hazrat usman bin mas'ud who is he 
a sahabi of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa The reason for this is that when the beloved Rasul was laying Hazrat Osman bin Mas'un radiallahu to rest in his grave, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked for a huge rock to be brought. Some narrations say a rock was found in the grave. In other words, when they were digging, another narration says that the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked for a rock to be brought. But because of its weight, it could not be lifted. Nobody could lift the weight. Nobody could lift the rock. So the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa went to it and he effortlessly lifted the rock by himself and placed it as a tombstone. Some narrations at the foot side and according to some narrations at the head side of Hadrat Osman bin Maz'un radiallahu anhu. Now point to note, nobody else was able to lift the rock. Nobody else was able to lift the rock. But Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa lifted the rock himself effortlessly. Now, how did he do this? Because there is none like him in any way, even in strength and power. This again brings us back to what I said yesterday that Huzur Sayyidita Sharia Radilan beautifully explained this when he said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aap hai, unique and peerless as you, none can be in all your unique splendors. Peerless you are. Now you may be thinking, why I've taken you on such a long journey while speaking about the Sahaba Ikram, Ridwan Allah Majmain and the Ahl Bayt. I've taken you on this journey all the way to Jannah al Baqi so that you and I understand what happened after Nabi Karim Sallallahu placed a rock as a marker at the grave of Hadrat Usman bin Mazun. I have brought you all this way on this discussion today for you to understand something very important. What is this? That after placing the rock at the grave of Hadrat Usman bin Mazun radiallahu the beloved Nabi said, from now on I will lay all my noble family members who pass away unbed. from now on i will lay all my noble family members who pass away near the grave of uthman bin mazun radiallahu an i will lay all my bed to rest near the grave of this sahabi of mine Allahu Akbar. Hence, Hadrat Sayyidatuna Ruqayya radiallahu anha, the beloved daughter of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the wife of Sayyidina Usman, the Nurain radiallahu anha, was laid to rest here. In the early days, there was a dome even near this area also, which Shaykh Muhakki has written, which is known as the Qubay Banat, where which symbolizes the graves of the noble daughters of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, let me tell you, time is going, and there are a few minutes left before I complete today's discussion. Now, let me tell you more. When Hadrat Sayyidatuna Fatima bin Ta'asa, Sayyidatuna, Remember the name Sayyidatuna Fatima bint Asad radiallahu ta'ala anha who is the mother of Amirul Mu'minin Sayyiduna Mawla Ali radiallahu an. Who is she? She is the mother of Mawla Ali radiallahu an. She is also laid to rest next to the graves of Sayyiduna Ibrahim. The beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also laid his beloved sons, Hadrat Sayyidina Ibrahim radiallahu an, next to Hadrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Sayyidina Usman ibn Mas'un radiallahu ta'ala an. He also laid his beloved son to rest next to Hadrat Osman ibn Maz'un radiallahu ta'ala an. And now when Sayyidatuna Ruqayya radiallahu an left this world, the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa asked for what he said, that from now on I will lay all my noble family members who pass away near the grave of Uthman bin Maz'un radiallahu an. What does he do? He also, the beloved Nabi, lays Hazrat, lays Hazrat Ibrahim radiallahu an there. And when Sayyidatuna Ruqayya passes away from this dunya, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lays Sayyidatuna Ruqayya radiallahu an to rest where near the grave of Hazrat Osman bin Maz'un radiallahu ta'ala an. And when Hazrat Fatima bin Ta'asad, who is the mother of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Hazrat Sayyiduna Ali al-Muttadha, karam Allah ta'ala wajhul kareem, passes away, then she is also laid to rest. She is that Mubarak personality that the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam referred to him as, her, as, his, her, as his mother, and he himself, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, laid in her cover before putting her in her grave. Think about it. And this Blessed personality also laid to rest who? Next to where? This Sahabi of Rasulullah Sallallahu So for those who want to separate the Sahaba Ikram, Ridwanullah Ajma'in from the Ahl Bayt and the Ahl Bayt from the Sahaba Ikram and those who slander the Sahaba Ikram, Ridwanullah Ajma'in, let them know you can try until Qayamat and you will fail. For the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam laid his noble family members, his blessed son Sayyidina Ibrahim Radiallahu Anh, Hadrat Sayyidatuna Ruqayy Radiallahu Anha and even the mother of Mawla Ali Radiallahu next to Sahabi Rasul Hadrat Uthman ibn Mas'un radiallahu an, and the beloved Nabi set the precedent and announced till Qayamat that leave alone you trying to separate 
them in this world. I have connected them. I have connected them to one another even after they have journeyed into the hereafter. So remember, my beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "My ahl bayt, the gist of the narration, my ahl bayt are the I like the ark of Nuh alaihi salam." And the same beloved Nabi says that my sahaba are like stars. Follow any one of them, and you will attain salvation. I said this many times before. I am and I am repeating the statement for the sake of understanding today. In the last, actually, I have gone over a few minutes more than the time that I should be speaking. But I am going to request a few more minutes of your time tonight. I. Said said this many times before and i am repeating the statement for the sake of the understanding that nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the ahl bayt are like this like the ark of nuh alaihi salam my ahl bayt and he also said in another narration that my sahaba are like stars follow any one of them and you will attain salvation now look at the wisdom and the beauty in the mubarak words of my beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the ark of nuh alaihi salam was the ark of salvation whoever got onto the ark sailed successfully and the stars are the means of navigation and guidance for those who have knowledge of the stars and those who know the true secrets behind the stars and their positions and those who understand that you may have an ark but if you sail without having knowledge of the stars and if you sail without taking assistance from the stars then you will not reach your destination and if you gaze at the stars without getting onto the ark you will not reach your destination so the beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was once again connecting the sahaba and the ahl bayt for us so that we understand that you can leave you can leave you cannot attain success can understand that you can not attain success and reach your destination of salvation if you leave any one of them okay that if you leave one of the sahaba of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam or if you leave the ahl bayt you will not be able to attain success because it is one which is the ship of ship of salvation and the other are the stars of guidance and if you wish to reach your destination if you wish to enter jannah if you wish to come the beloved nabi is teaching us that if you wish to come to me as mine while i am at maqam al mahmud and if you wish to attain the shade of the lewa al hamd which is the banner of praise then sail on the ark of salvation and follow the stars of guidance for without my ahl bayt and without my sahaba you will go astray you will become gumra you will lose your way and it will lead you to your dis- it will lead to your destruction and devastation but if you hold firmly to the ahl bayt and my sahaba ikram ridwanullahi ta'ala majma'in then your final destination is at my sacred feet and your means to me are both these blessed congregations of my beloved so and this is why you are my imam parwana sham risalat imam ishq mohabbat sayyidi asha ala hadrat imam ahl sunnat رضي الله تعالى عنه so beautifully said ke ahl sunnat ka hai bera par ashab e huzur ahl sunnat ka hai bera par ashab e huzur najm hai aur naaw hai itrat rasulullah ki the ahl the ahl sunnat flotilla of success are mustafa's companions of an eminence like stars they are while rasulullah's noble family are arcs of deliverance so if anyone claims to be a husaini then while holding to the daman of ahl bayt he should hold firmly to siddiq akbar to faruq e azam to usman ibn nurain to ali ibn tuza radiyallahu ta'ala anhum because if you do not then they are not true husainis and alhamdulillah we who love ghousi azam radiyallahu who honor khaja muinuddin chishti and follow ala hazrat imam ahl sunnat radiyallahu the true husainis for the husainis understand the perfect and the pure balance of love and loyalty Loyalty between the Sahaba and the Ahl Bayt, and presenting this pure balance again, the Imam of the Ahl Sunnah of the Alaun beautifully says, "Ashab Nujum e Rahnuma hai, Ashab Nujum e Rahnuma hai, Kashti hai Ali Mustafa, stars of guidance, all his Sahaba are. The Ark is the noble family of Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam." And I'm going to end to say this that. As I said, I've taken more of your time than than I expected today, but I'm going to end with these words for today. And on this discussion, that let me remind you that in all this which we have discussed, some important other some other important points have come out. Okay, when we talked about Jantul Baki and other things, man, we must honour the law and etc. In all this is the refutation of the Wahhabis and the Dubandis as well, who forbid the practices of the Ahl Sunnah. It has become clear as day. That Sayyidina Uthman bin Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu was a very blessed and a pious personality and the beloved companion of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all wished to be laid laid to rest near him the beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam even placed a rock at his grave site so the others are laid to rest near him including the noble daughters of Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam this clearly explains the importance of respecting the graves of the deceased 
This also proves that to construct mazars for the awliya, to build domes and place signs like chadar sharifs etc on the graves so that the people recognize their graves as the graves of the pious is permitted. It is evident from this that the blessed practice of making the graves of the pious recognizable is from the time of the beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to place signs of recognition at the grave so that the grave is recognized is the tariq of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And while on this discussion let me tell you that when you and my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laid his beloved son Hadrat Ibrahim radiallahu to rest beside Hadrat Osman bin Mas'un radiallahu then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did that which he had not done before. What did he do? Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sprinkled water on the holy grave of Hazrat Ibrahim radiallahu an. And this narration is as per Hazrat Umar radiallahu an. And the one whom even these deviants bad mazhabs accept, even they accept. Who? Sheikh Abdul Haq Mahdi's Delhi radiallahu an has quoted this. So this has been made clear that to even sprinkle water on the grave of the deceased is the man of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for it is that which the Nabi did after laying his beloved son Hadrat Osman bin Ma'un radiallahu ta'ala uh, beloved son Hazrat Ibrahim radiallahu to rest in his grave. So remember the companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the beloved companions are the stars of guidance. And the Ahl Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are like the Ark of Nuh al Islam. And again today I end with the words of Allah Hadrat Adim al-Barqat radiallahu ta'ala an. Ke Ahl Sunnat kahe bera par ashabe huzur najme hai aur nao hai itrat Rasulullah ki. We make dua for all those who are Ili now coming to Allah grant him shifai kamil sayat ajil especially dua I'm making today for Mufti Kaisar Ali Razvi's father-in-law Hadrat Lama Maulana Idris Raza Sahib who is extremely ill